today's episode, we have a fuel tank, custom drop tank. So I think out of everything that has arrived for this build so far, this is probably the most exciting thing that I've received. Like, let's just take a moment to appreciate how bloody amazing this thing, this thing is. Like, have a look at the welds on this thing. Like, that is just ridiculous. Like, it's just, the workmanship in this tank is just next level. So yeah, it's an absolute piece of art. So for people that fall in love with objects and marry them or, or whatever, I have some sort of an understanding on, on how, the, how that feels right now. So <laughs> anyway, we'll, uh, we'll move on from that. So yeah, this tank, so custom uh, drop tank. So it's made of alloy, powder coated with the black uh, it's got the fuel sender in the top here. Um, it's got an internal pump. So this pump is out of a uh, BA. I think it's like an FPV um, version. So, so yeah, we've got the internal fuel pump. Uh, we've got the filler. So just, yeah, filler cap here. Got um, a bung here, the breather. Uh, got another return port here so I can return that back to tank or there is a return port here so I'm not sure which one I'll use at this stage but yeah so she tapers at the back here so I think it's going to look bloody awesome once this thing's uh, installed into the car so also just got um, some braided stainless steel flexi line got some alloy hard tube dash 8 uh, both of them are dash 8 and then got a heap of dash 8 fittings uh, to start plumbing up the fuel as well. So got a regulator with a bypass so I can return the uh, fuel back to tank. Uh, inline fuel filter as well. And then yeah, all the various um, hose ends as well. So straights, 45s, 90s. These ones screw onto the alloy tube. And then these are the quick uh, couplings that go into the fuel pump. So yeah, we'll, um, we'll get cracking into it and start installing this amazing bloody piece of art right here. Okay, so obviously being a drop tank, I'm gonna install it into this rear section here. So there is plenty of room to mount a drop tank into there. So what I plan on doing is welding in some 40 by 40 square hollow section from here to here on both sides and then the drop tank will mount onto that square section. Also, what I will do is I think I'll drop the top of the tank down 40 mil above the top of the chassis. So that way that's going to allow clearance for the breather and the sender unit and the filler. Uh, that way I can mount the tray as low to the uh, chassis as I can get it. So I want the, the tray when I come to making the tray to sit really uh, as low as possible as I can get it. Okay, so I've just cut up the 40 by 40 square section. I've got that sitting in there roughly where it's gonna be welded. Uh, so you can also see this angle, 40 by 40 angle, I've just got that uh, clamped in there for now. So that is gonna be welded to here and then that's gonna drop the tank down 40 mil and it'll just rest on to this angle section. I think this is gonna work out pretty good because this square section, once it's welded in, it's gonna kind of stiffen up and strengthen up this cross member here. So there's probably gonna be a lot of uh, load on this cross member. So I think, um, you know, by welding this section into here, it's just gonna strengthen uh, this up a little bit further.
Okay, so I've just welded this angle section onto the square hollow section. Just thought it'd be easier to weld it onto uh, this now while it's out of the car. And I've just grinded it all back. So now I can, yeah, weld these bits into the chassis. Okay, so the drop tank, I've just sat that in, just for the time being, just to make sure everything lines up and it all fits in, and yep, she fits in really nicely. So I've just tacked these uh, cross members in for the time being. I'm gonna just remove the tank again, and then I'll weld all these up properly. Uh, I just wanted to, yeah, trial fit that. So underneath, yeah, it looks bloody clean, I reckon. I'm really happy with that powder coated black looks um, looks clean. So with the tank, I did go a little bit narrower just so you could see the coilovers from the back. I just just really wanted to yeah keep keep the drop tank in between the two coilovers. So yeah, from the back, you'll be able to see them. So yeah, I think that's going to look yeah really cool from the back with the fat tires, the drop tank, and the and the coilovers. So so yeah, I'll remove this tank now and um, I'll start welding all this yeah, in properly and then I can um, drill some holes in here and then mount, mount the um, tank into there. So that is everything all welded up and I've drilled out the holes for the mounts and the tank is all bolted in. I've just used 10 mil bolts with nylox underneath. So there's eight of them holding that tank in. So yeah, that's all mounted in now so I can start running this fuel line now. Okay, so with the fuel lines, I'm just gonna use dash eight fittings, hoses and hard tube. Uh, it wasn't that much more expensive to go dash eight. So I thought, oh, I might as well go dash eight if I ever do upgrade the engine or if ever I want more power, then I've got, you know, the dash eight there, which will flow, uh, plenty of flow in the future. So it's just more future proofing. Um, so what I'm gonna do is go flexi line from the intake and return uh, from this fuel tank and follow this cross member and I'll mount two hard lines so dash eight alloy tube, two hard lines roughly about here, and then that'll follow on the right hand side of the chassis all the way up to roughly probably about here. And then I'll go flexi line from there up across the engine and then the bypass regulator I'll mount to this side of the firewall just because it's less cluttered over this side. And then from the regulator, uh, I'll go into the carby and then the bypass will then go back into the return hard line and then that'll go back to tank. Okay, so with this Dash 8 alloy tube, I've just rolled it all out. So it'll come in a eight metre length roll. So I've just rolled it all out on the ground. So I've just found the best way to roll it, roll it out is just put your foot on the end and then kind of just work your way along on the ground and it kind of just, yeah, rolls it out straight. So I've just cut it in half. So what I've done is used one of these tube cutters. So I've got this tube cutter in a uh, flaring tool kit. So that's come in handy for, for cutting this tube. So yeah, now that that's cut in half, it's a lot easier to work with. Okay, so I've just ran the two fuel pipes down the side of the chassis. So I've just decided to terminate the ends just before this hump here. Um, and then I'll run flexi line out of these 45s to the tank. I was planning on running a 90 degree and then another 90 and then follow the side of the chassis, but I don't have a tube bender to suit dash eight uh, tube. So I've just decided to yeah, terminate it here just before the top of the chassis. So I've got the hose ends in position. So I'm just gonna start plumbing up this with the flexi line. So 
This uh, straight, this is the intake that'll come out and then bend and then into the filter. And then the other end will come out and then into obviously one of the 45s. And then, yeah, that other uh, 45 for the, uh, for the return will come out and then into this 90 degree here to the bottom of the tank. Okay, so with this internal fuel pump, it's got the three ports. I believe this one is for a breather, that one is return, and then that one's the intake. So I'm only gonna be using the intake and I'm gonna cap off these other two ports just because I've got a breather in the tank and then another return port down the bottom of the tank. So these are a quick connect fitting. So they just come off like that and then yeah, snap back in. So you can get them from EFI Hardware. I'll leave a link in the description on where you can get them quick release uh, fuel fittings. Um, so it's got two ports which are 516. So these two are 516 to dash six. And then this one is 38 to dash eight. <laughs> So with the hose and fittings, I'm using Speedflow 200 series Teflon stainless steel hose and then the 200 series uh, Stealth black fittings. And when you cut the hose, I just use a cutoff saw, but just wrap it in a bit of uh, tape just to prevent or minimize any flaring of the stainless steel braid. So it tends to want to flare out. So you, just to, to minimize that, just wrap it in the tape. So yeah, once you cut the hose, then you just remove the tape So there is two layers, you've got the stainless steel outer braid and then you've got the Teflon inner tube on the inside. So the fittings come in, there's like a three piece fitting. So once you screw the uh, body off, so this is the body and then you've got the olive and then you've got the hose tail. So the first, first thing is to put the body over the stainless steel braid. So it is a little bit tricky, you just kind of got to yeah, get it over and then kind of screw it on and it should go over. So yeah, once that's on, then what you want to do is I find that I just put the hose end into the Teflon tube just to kind of round that Teflon tube out. And then, then you can put the olive in between the stainless steel and the Teflon. So you might need to sometimes use some pliers. It can be a little bit tricky, but just use some pliers and then just flare out the stainless steel wire. Once you've got the stainless steel wire out the way, you can put the olive over the Teflon. So you don't want any of the stainless steel wires to go in between the olive and the Teflon. So just carefully put that olive over the Teflon and it should sit in there like that. And then what you can do is just use something to push against to get the Teflon to bottom out on the olive. So that looks pretty good. And then you can put the hose tail into the Teflon. That just sits in into there or pushes into there like so. And then the body can then screw onto the hose tail. So once that's screwed on there, you can put it into a vise and clamp it down. Just using a bit of cardboard just to protect the fitting and then also, I don't have a proper, correct anodized spanner, but I've just been using a normal spanner and just put a rag uh, in between and then you can just tighten up the hose end onto the body there. So you don't want to do it too tight, just, just so it's firm, so about there. Okay, so that is one hose end completed. So that's all the hoses made up for this end. So I've just ran them all nice and neatly back to the tank. So I've just got all that cable tied in for now. I'll probably make up brackets uh, at a later date to, to make it a lot more neater than cable ties, but for the time being, that, that'll do. So now I can continue on with this end. So this line curves around on the inside of the chassis and then I'll probably um, terminate these 
pipes, roughly about there. So just cut this tube back to here and put the fittings over the tube and tighten them up. So with the fittings, there is an O-ring and an olive. So just when you do cut the tube back, just use a file to clean up any burrs on the um, end of the tube because you don't want to damage the O-ring when you go to push the fitting on. So yeah, use a file and also just use a bit of rubber grease on the O-ring. I found that was a lot easier to, to push the fitting over. So yeah, they're tightened up now. So I've also got the 45s on the end. So I can run the hose up to the regulator. So what I've done with the regulator is I've just used a light stand just to dummy sort of fit that up. It's, I'm not sure exactly where that's gonna mount, but I'll give it a little bit of fat just to uh, be able to move it around and mount it wherever. If I need to, I'll be able to cut the hoses back a little bit uh, later on, but for the time being, to get it all plumbed up, I'll just, yeah, sort of dummy, dummy fit that for now. Okay, so that is everything all plumbed up. So you got the regulator all plumbed here. So this line here is the intake that goes into the reg that is going to the carby and then this is your bypass that goes back to tank so yeah everything all looks nice and neat so just follows the back of the engine and then into the tubing there so i've still got a couple of jobs left to do i'm gonna have to clamp everything i might make up some nice little brackets and um to pick up some of these bolts and just yeah and clamp everything properly so I've still got that to do I've got a nut cert gun so I'll use that to um, put some nut certs into the chassis and then clamp the hard tubing um, and then I'm not sure whether I'm gonna pull everything apart and paint all the back uh, chassis here all the cross members everything that I've opened up I'm not sure whether I'll pull everything apart um, and then put it all back together and then start it up or whether I should start it up now and then paint it after. I just, I just think if I start it up now, I'm gonna have to pull everything apart and then open up the fuel lines and gonna have fuel and everything piss everywhere. So I'm sort of thinking I might, yeah, pull everything apart, paint it, put it all back together and then start it after that. So undecided on what I'll do there. So maybe leave a comment in the comment section on what you think I, I should do there. So anyway, but yeah, that's, everything all plumbed up fuel tanks in so yeah really happy with how that has turned out if you got something out of that video hit that like and subscribe button below i also just hit 2000 subscribers the other day so once again a big thank you to you guys for supporting the channel i did notice though that out of everyone that watches my content only 30 percent of you guys are subscribed so if you do like the content that i am putting out hit that subscribe button that's going to help me out to grow the channel I also leave a link in the show notes for the products that I used for the fuel system. So EFI hardware for the quick couplers and Speed Pro for the hose and fittings. Also, if you enjoy the build and you are new to the channel, I'll put a card up here for the playlist for the HX1 ton of build. So it's the very first episode all the way to the latest. So have a binge on that and get up to date with the build so far. So yeah, we'll leave it with that and we'll see you next time on Shanky Garage. Cheers.